to talk about the holmel laser enucleation of bladder tumors now the bladder tumor that i have selected one of them is a frank papillomatous bladder tumor the other are bladder lesions we'll see how we look at the i think that uh, how it all started was in the year 2000 when this uh, paper appeared in the journal of urology in from from japan and they created a needle a curved needle electrode and that was put up on a trp thing and they wanted to do a n block excision of the tumor and soon after that a second paper which came again from japan in a year and a half later in december 2001 they talked about the end block resection using the same needle and also the use of holmium laser so that was the first time holmium laser was you know documented in the literature to do end block resection of the bladder tumor so for a transitional cell bladder we the standard of care main steel rbt and if the same goals can be achieved in a less bloodless manner then why not so i decided to use my hands on holmium laser enucleation like i do it for holmium laser prostatectomy and here the fiber is used to encircle the base of the tumor in a manner that it coagulates all the blood vessels going towards the tumor in a sense it causes um, devascularization of the tumor and then it is used to raise like a razor a sharp layer of the mucosa and submucosa from the bladder including the tumor the resection is virtually bloodless as you will see and you can see the the clarity of the superficial muscle layer when you are doing the procedure so i'll start with a video unfortunately i have this video as a hyperlink this is a case of 57 year old person who came to me with frank hematuria and clot retention in the year 2009 and this i presented in world congress of endo urology in 2012 in istanbul so i'm going to go to the video please bear with me i will just show you the video so i will start from here and i will see i hope you can see it on the video so here there is a c56 year old male i have written 57 i don't know that so he presented with hematuria and clot retention i did the cystoscopy and i evacuated almost 100 ml of clots from the bladder and you can see there is a papillomatous growth close to the right ureteric orifice overriding the right ureteric orifice and if you are not careful then you can chip off the ureteric orifice if you are doing a tr trbt so that was the time when the patient was stable and the clots have been evacuated but if you can see the background in the bladder is still red glow so there was bleeding coming up but it was not as bad as to cause loss of vision the tumor was in this case reasonably pedunculated and here i come back with the laser resectoscope with the punz carrier i use a wolf instrument and this is a 550 micron laser fiber and the setting that i have used is 0.5 into 20 initially and which i slowly took to 0.5 into 40 but initially it is 0.5 into 20 so you can see how i have started uh, raising a flap almost 3 4 mm away from the tumor base and what you can see is the moment you start uh, going through the tumor base you are devascularizing so the tissues become white there is no bleeder there so if you use any other energy you don't get this kind of a color when you are uh, doing a trbt so uh, slowly one has to patiently one has to just encircle the base of the tumor you can see the blood vessels in the mucosa going towards the tumor but when you are hitting them below the mucosa they all get coagulated and they stop bleeding or they do not bleed at all or sometimes if they bleed you know what to do with them because you are anyway having a coagulative energy in your hand so you are encircling uh, i was encircling the bladder tumor using the holmium laser fiber and all you need to be careful is that not to go too deep 
So you keep having uh, the fiber parallel to the surface of the tumor that you're trying to resect. So I'm going very close to the ureteric orifices, uh, orifice on the right side. And uh, I'm taking care that occasionally I go a little deep and then I come back and you see the ureteric orifice. This is the time when I'm trying to encircle the tumor base away from the ureteric orifice. And it is not difficult once you master. So the, the, the basic principle of holmium laser energy when you use it is that your fiber has to be parallel to the plane where you are working. So I'm slowly working and going on the other side of the tumor and creating a line of incision on the mucosa, getting below the mucosa and lifting it up slowly. It is a little time consuming process. One has to be little patience, but then if you are if you are committed to do something like that, the end result you will see is wonderful. Now, uh, this, can you see, there may be a little bit oozing, but you should know how to handle it because all you need to do is to devascularize the bleeder. So you go a little away from the bleeder and get into the submucosa, create a plane and start moving towards the tumor again. It is like using your knife to scoop out a papilloma. That is what we do when we are doing, you know, in what is called most surgery for melanoma of the skin. So we as general surgeons were trained to do something like that, to create fine uh, planes, to cut finely, and you should note that there is hardly any bleeding. The tumor has become devascularized. The base is not bleeding. There is perhaps uh, some, bleed, uh, some blood supply left, which we will find at the end. That is in the depth of the base of the papilloma. But right now, if you notice, the area of uh, resection is much wider because it is not just the papilloma base that I have taken. This is the bleeder that I was talking about. That was in the depth of the, and this is perhaps the final bleeder that we came across in this particular case. So you can see with perseverance, one can really take it away as a bloodless procedure. And you remember, we started with hematuria, clot, clot retention. Actually, this was as an emergency that came. He was a young, robust person, 56, and we could do this. This is the net result. I'm sure it is very gratifying, and you see that the base of the tumor is there, the, tum the tissue, and this is the, this is the area from which we have taken. I took the biopsies from this area, you must take a cold cup biopsy from the areas when, uh, you, whenever you get time. Or an, if you're not happy, if you're not happy, then you should uh, take a biopsy. But the point is that it is a point of technique and if you can do it, you can do an end block. So I'm not the only one who was happy to end block in 2012 we got a paper from SGPGI group. And what they did was they, they studied the loop, the usual TURP loop. They made an angle of 45 degrees and they tried to uh, do the same thing, which I have done with the, which I have done with the uh, laser. And then this thing was subsequently seen by another group from the same, from the same uh, hospital but much later down in 2017, perhaps. So the principle is not to transgress the boundaries of the bladder. This is very important, whether you do TRBT, whether you do enucleation with cautery, whether you do enucleation with uh, scissors, there's a technique of doing a uh, enucleation using endoscopic scissors also. 
but I have used whole meal laser. Cold cup biopsy from the base of the lesion must be taken if there is a doubt. Histological studies have not found any difference. Unfortunately or fortunately, you can say that even though it looks very gratifying, but histologically speaking, the pathologists have not been overall convinced in the world literature. Some uh, smaller groups with their studies have shown that yes, uh, there, is, there is an advantage, but overall, the overall consensus in the world literature is that there is hardly any difference. So intravesical lesions in which holmium laser uh, can be used is proliferative cystitis. So I'm going to talk about proliferative cystitis as I have some videos more there. These all the lesions, you know, can be seen, can be dealt with using that technique. The limitations of electric current are that the con control of depth of penetration is not a, very much into your hands and the bleeding can cause difficult vision if it starts to bleed and there may be a damage to uretric orifice. So I talk about uh, a gentleman, he's, he was 32 year old male anesthetist actually. He had come to me in 2007 with a diagnosis of a papillomatous tumor in the trigone. I had done a TURBT, the conventional TURBT, and I had found histologically he had cystitis glandularis and he had never had hematuria. He had presented with painful uh, urination. So I did a TURBT. I was very happy because his symptoms went away, but he came back six months later and he came back again with painful LUTs. I'm going to show you the video. Please hold on. Hello. Uh, can can somebody tell? Sir, me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm here. It's just minimizing. I think the video will stop. The last video was pretty clear. Yeah. So now, can you see this now? I think yeah. We are, On air, no? we are saying it's clear. Yeah. Okay. So this is how ending the second time into this friend of mine who is an anesthetist at 27 years, and you see. I was looking for the ureteric orifice. Can you see? Uh, sorry. Sorry for this. So, so I was looking for the ureteric orifice and um, this was the only ureteric orifice on the right side, which was in the part of the initial resection that we had done. So there was ureteric orifice here, and I was looking for the extent of the tumor, uh, of the lesion. So it was all spread in the trigones, not going supratrigonally, but you can see the scar of the previous resection. And <clears throat> despite my efforts, I could not see the right left ureteric orifice. So I have spent some time, but since it is an unedited video, I'll show you what I did. I started with, I came back with a resectoscope and I did the same thing. I knew this was not malignancy, but I did not know how, how many times would I resect. If you notice, I had resected the trigon the previous time. I had not seen any ureteric orifices because <coughs> of the cobblestone appearance, they were not visible. So I had done a TRPT once and I thought if I do a TRBT again, next time when he comes, what would I do? So I started using the laser. And the same principle, keep the fiber parallel to the plane that you want to uh, continue into. And all I was hoping was to see a unitary orifice when I do the complete excision of the using this thing. So, I, this is an unedited video, as you can see, because um, when I tried to edit, it was a very old video. When I tried to edit it, it was actually losing quality. So I decided not to edit it, but I know when to stop. So if, uh, I hope it is clear, visible there. And if you think you are enjoying it, I'll continue for some time. I'll show you till I go up to the end. Radio is clear. Okay. So 
the whole idea is to keep working and keep looking at your bearings on and off to make sure that uh, you are see trigone is the most sensitive part of the bladder and this damping was causing symptoms because this was infiltrating the trigone a trigonal musculature and you know he had a dramatic recovery from this urea following this all i am going to show you one step here that when i am doing this you you should be careful you should not undermine and go to the bladder because like this i have just gone deep have you noticed this so if you are a little more confident and if you say now the job the nature will tell you not uh, it's not done you have to be a little more patient and you see i just almost tried to dig a hole into the bladder which i was seeing but you can really take away a very fine a very fine layer of tissue along with this so i'll stop here for this and i'll come back i hope i can can you see the screen i'm no, not yet sir okay, just give me a minute Can you see now? Yeah. yeah. Once okay. you go into slideshow mode. Yeah, I'll go into slideshow mode. So uh, yes, this is yes, another yes. case now. There's another case which 58 year old. This I did in 2008. He came to me with recent onset urgency, and his urine cytology was suspicious for malignant cells. So I am just going to focus on the cystoscopy again, and this is the one. Actually, I had collected few more, but can you see? Hello. Yes, sir. We can. So I found these papillary growths all over the trigon again, but there were again plenty of them. and he does have a bladder neck uh, obstruction which i actually did but i'll show you yeah so i started uh, with the same manner what i want to emphasize is that uh, you could do it if you wanted to do it it takes a little more time, but it's not bladder uh, you see the biggest advantage with holmium laser is that it does not cause inflammation because depth of penetration by electric current or another laser is only 0.4 mm so if you are not cutting beyond or if you are not your energy is not going beyond 0.4 mm then obviously uh, you are not leaving behind an inflamed tissue or tissue which requires inflammation to heal so these patients somehow that that i soon after the catheter removal was absolutely asymptomatic i really uh, can't uh, tell you that uh, beyond this that it is perhaps because when you are cutting you are cutting a very fine knife 0.4 mm depth is actually a very fine knife no other energy whether it is whether it is another laser or whether it is uh, electric current that can cause this kind of because if you use an electric current the depth of the current is going to cause ischemic coagulation of the deeper layers and that is what can be bad for the patient in terms of inflammation and trigone being an area which is rich in sensory fibers gives rise to dyspnea and none of these three patients in fact the the second one as i said he had come to me with painful menstruation after initial qrbt he became absolutely fine but after laser he said you've done magic sir because i don't have anything any pain no dysuria i was scared of urethral sensation which i had in the first qrbt but you see in his case i could not see the urethral cavity on the left side till the end 
but uh, I do not know where it was, honestly. But he did not, we I followed him up. There was no hydronephrosis, so it did exist somewhere, which I could not see. I, uh, you know, if you notice, that was a large video. The rest of the video I tried, I spent, tried uh, looking for the left orifice, but I think. In this case, again, you can see that the fiber of the laser is parallel to the base that I'm creating. So I'm creating a floor and I'm aiming more towards the tumor rather than towards the base. Occasionally, my fiber gets stuck with the muscle and that is what creates a small niche there. So I'll forward it a bit. This is also an unedited video. But in this case, I have done a bladder neck incision after this using the laser. But today's topic is only the bladder tumor, so I'll stick on to this. See, the whole idea of these videos is that uh, you can, if you know what you're doing and if you have a control over your energy, then you can do these things. And they are very gratifying. Somebody may say that you could have done a TRP in a much, a TRBT using a loop in a much uh, lesser time. Yes, of course I could have done. See, there's such a small, uh, if you look at the height of this papilloma, it's a diffuse papilloma. If you see at the look at the height of this papilloma, you want to take a loop, you will go deep in the which you never want to. But when you're using this technique, you are restricting, you know exactly how deep you want to go. And therefore, you are leaving behind an uninflamed, almost healthy trigonal uh, tissue and that is what is important. Uh, I'm not saying that uh, this is a replacement for what we do routinely using the TURP loop, but all I'm saying is it's a refinement. So sometimes you can go deep if you see at places I have gone little deep, but then I know exactly how deep or how superficial I need to be. And that is where, uh, you know, if you are used to doing these things, then it comes to you. So I will suggest that if you have cases like this and you have laser machine with you, you should continue doing these things, master the technique. You can see the fibers of the uh, superficial detrusor, superficial fibers of the detrusor here, which are going along with the, along with the, Special and that is that is actually important. Another minute or so, and we should be through. So this is the area, the large area that we have resected, taken care of. I would take care of the rest of the things like this. So I'll quickly go back to my PPT. Can you see the PPT now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So there's hardly anything. Uh, I think this is hung. Yeah. I think just to conclude, transurethral end block resection is feasible with minimal blood loss, safe, 
and produces satisfactory histological specimen. Thank you very much. I'll stop here.